you mentioned a little bit other brain diseases and in this question mm -hmm. i want first to start you uh, can you just maybe generally describe your experience and i'm talking about just maybe if you can describe first results what results you achieved uh, in re in relation to parkinson and alzheimer yeah yeah look very good question i'm happy you're asking because um you know when we are connecting uh, brain cancer uh, with neurodegenerative disease we start understanding some very very crucial uh, aspects of why do we get the disease because you see um these two kinds of diseases are situated in the same environment in the brain environment in the in our skull um and you see neurons and helper cells there's two kind of cells i mean in general terms neurons that uh, make us basically humans they they communicate and it's pretty pretty simple cells basically and then we have cells that called helper cells glia astrocytes uh, that are helper cells that are making the right environment basically um, uh, they are providing for the right setup for the neuron cells uh, um, to um, to live in basically yeah so neurons are very simple yeah and the um, they are not flexible cells in the terms of energy also um, and then we have helper cells that are very flexible. They are they have many possibilities, many um, um, possibilities in terms of um, uh, energy consumption. And that's a very interesting thing because you see, when we talk in neurodegeneration, that's Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and different kinds of dementia. We're talking about cell death, right? Yeah, brain cells. Yeah, yeah they degenerate and die. They degenerate and die. And that's what's happening. Why? Because when we deprive them from the normal sources of energy, they cannot mutate because they lack metabolic flexibility. They are very simple. They can only degenerate and die. What happens? with the helper cells, with glia cells. Well, they have a lot of metabolic flexibility. Um, they have very complicated structure. So when they're deprived from the same energy, and remember, the environment is the same. Flow, you know, dep deprived of, um, you know, uh, micronutrients, um, insufficient, um, um, oxygenation, things like that, right? They will mutate and they will start to kind of uh, try, try to survive on another kinds of fuel. And that's what's happening. That's uh, what is leading to tumors, tumors, cancer. That's the thing. We have to understand that. And only 1% of um, tumors in the brain are the, brain, the neuron tumors, neuronal tumors, only 1% because of that because they lack metabolic flexibility and from here we can make uh, a kind of assumption i mean i mean we can conclude maybe can we use the same means the same tools to normalize the environment to both reverse cancer or reverse neurodegenerative disease and my answer is absolutely the same and that's what also i'm i'm doing we have good results with uh, alzheimer's and parkinson's basically stopping alzheimer's and uh, reversing we have i have one client with parkinson just started but already now the tremor is like much less and uh, the stiffness of one side of the body is gone and the stability is much better so um it's fantastic, it's fantastic. We're using absolutely the same techniques. And with Alzheimer's, um, also a results, I can tell you, for example, about my father. We, um, we had situations where he was uh, um, basically, he was sitting with his computer for three or four hours and not really doing something. Um, and um, I mean, coming, I mean, he, he was not really able to communicate in a good way was um, and now the situation he's uh, 87 now 
and he can drive a car again. He's driving a car. He's uh, working as engineer again, and they are, <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, they have, a, they have a lab at home and he's working and he's totally normal again. And he's both doing breathing and nutrition. He's ketogenic and he imp implemented everything that I told him. It took me many years um, to ensure that he was actually doing this. Um, the same thing with my mother also. I mean, she had uh, heart problems and now she's thriving. So um, it's absolutely possible. The only problem is with Alzheimer's. And that's the biggest problem. It's not a problem with uh, um, tumors. It's not a problem with Parkinson's, but it's a very big problem with Alzheimer's because there is no visible, uh, uh, visible signs of disease. That's why people very often, they go into denial and uh, they don't really want to work. And that's a very big problem with Alzheimer's. And the window of opportunity for Alzheimer's is very short, where they can, pretty short, basically after the diagnose, it's about two years. And uh, if you are not starting doing a, a crucial changes here, then the prerequisites that are, will be gone. And the prerequisites are um, like your understanding, your um, psychological, physiological, and um, there's a different prerequisite that you need to really work in this structured way. And they are gone in relatively short time. Uh, well, in, in brain tumors, that's shorter time yet. And I, ha I made a special, uh, um, a special uh, you know, graphs to show this. Um, we call it the window of, of opportunity for glioblast, for, for brain tumors and for Alzheimer's. And they're very different. But when you have a diagnose of glioblastoma, you have probably um, understood that you have between six to nine months. And you have very, very short um, uh, window of opportunity, about two to three months where you can start working very, in a very structured way. And in Alzheimer's is longer, but you don't have external signs of disease and people are not taking it seriously until it's too late. With Parkinson it's different because they have tremor. They cannot deny. And that's a very big difference between neurodegenerative diseases and, their, and our abilities to treat it with metabolic approaches. Okay, excellent. <laughs> That's yeah, very good to hear. Yeah, you yeah. would you would you say that if uh, you take a like if there is a, a, a client or patient student with Parkinson, like let's say initial stages and without any accompanying conditions, and this person is co completely willing to take the whole program to do breath work, physical exercise, to make uh, literally like. Uh, very like large changes in their diet, like maybe radical changes, in, radical changes in their diet. Would you say that such a person has like extremely high chance, like maybe absolutely, ninety percent, absolutely, absolutely. You see, I will, I will, I will, I will, uh, I, I will not ever, ever say any chances on in in terms of percents. But I will say if they follow my program where we connect, connect mental training with breathing retraining, with a reversal of metabolic syndrome, with nutrition, with moderate physical exercise, with process, with immunity work, it will have very, very high chances of reversal. And with also a bouquet of all other diseases. But, but the prerequisite is ability to move. Mm -hmm. And, and, a prerequisite of psychological prerequisite, which is ability to understand and really pro process information, which is very crucial. Mm -hmm. So yes, absolutely. Okay, excellent, yeah, <laughs> good, good to know. And Alzheimer would be similar, but as you described, just because of a like not sufficient feedback, we know that we are diagnosed, but we don't see in themselves that we have this problem, that's a problem. Absolutely. And with Alzheimer is, uh, is very hard because it will require um, a real understanding because people have to work, really work. And with Alzheimer's in the first stages, they are normal. Oh, I, I, I'm not, I have not, I've seen so many people that are in total denial. And then, and then it's too late. 
and then they are on the on the on the home for you know old people that uh, and that's only and the pills are not i mean it's making it worse basically um and also uh, when we're talking about statins statins mm -hmm. uh, there are many sta uh, signs that are showing that statins basically uh, push us towards uh, alzheimer's towards neurodegeneration 